great. Okay. Um, sorry about that. So for the recording, uh, <laughs> let me just repeat um, that uh, we've, we've paid the first half of our uh, $3,000 scholarship um, for our scholarship uh, student, Tabitha Holloway. Uh, so that's for the fall term. And then the second half of it uh, will be paid uh, at the end of uh, December. Um, so another item that uh, we can talk about later on the agenda uh, what came as a surprise to me that when I went to pay for our monthly bill for our storage room at Extra Space Storage, uh, I found out that they had raised the rate. Uh, so we had been paying $199 per month and they raised it to $248 per month, which is basically a whopping 25% increase. Um, actually, um, the within the past year, I think it was last November, um, we had been paying about $180 a month, and then they, they raised it to $199. So, so, they, so they raised it like 10% back then in November, and now they've raised it another 25%. So anyway, um, we may want to uh, revisit uh, our discussion about uh, alternatives uh, for storage, although that's never an easy uh, discussion. Um, and then the rest of what, uh, what I uh, have to say as treasurer is about the uh, orchid sale and uh, everything was extremely positive. Uh, and I think we have uh, those items uh, on the agenda to talk about also. So, uh, so I'll, I'll just say that um, for, for membership and for the sales that were raised by the AOS Judging Center, uh, and for the scholarship, uh, we did tremendously well with all of those. Okay, fantastic. Um, why don't we um, move on to that? Uh, it's, uh, you know, uh, it, it, it's, I think, um, I think we all want to know um, as much as we can about the great success that we had. So I figure you, you must have the, um, some of the figures anyway, on uh, the, uh, the numbers, attendance, uh, sales, uh, how, how the various vendors did, uh, vendor satisfaction, any feedback that you might have, Larry? Um, so really uh, what I have are the, the numbers on um, sales, you know, at the uh, Orchid Society booth, right? As well as the, our scholarship uh, collections, but I can tell you about those. Um, okay. So uh, for membership, um, I think uh, as uh, Ellen has reported, uh, we actually set a new record uh, for the number of, of new members that we signed up, uh, which, is, uh, which is great, it's amazing. That um, I think our previous you know, record, um, normally we, we, uh, we gradually lose, uh, I shouldn't say gradually, no, at, when it comes time to renew our membership at, right at the beginning of every year, um, we lose a bunch of people, people who had perhaps signed up the previous year and, and then uh, it turned out that, uh, you know, seemed like a good idea at the time, but they really weren't all that into it. Um, so so it's, it's pretty much a standard thing that we lose somewhere maybe around 25% of our membership every year, but then we regain uh, the e equal or maybe slightly greater number of members uh, during the year. And the largest number of those always come at the yearly orchid show, uh, where we sign up a lot of people at the orchid show. And then in other months, uh, we may have uh, visiting uh, uh, members, or uh, I should say visiting visitors who sign up uh, as members. And so we always get a few of those too. So anyway, our previous uh, record um, of new members signed up at an orchid show, I believe was 44. Uh, and <coughs> And this time, Ellen, how, how many did we have sign up? If you can just unmute for a minute. Was it 49? Yeah. Yeah. So, so we got 49 people that signed up at the, uh, at the sale. Uh, um, excuse me. You know, I'd really kind of like to uh, talk about the membership myself. Sure. Um, if Go you for have, it. If you, yeah. Uh, I don't have anything point to really add um, other than I think what I did about uh, bringing in some orcs uh, 
to get, even though they were small, maybe it didn't look excellent they looked okay and people were thrilled to get them so i think that might have helped a little bit and then larry went out and got the sign to put up that you got a free orchid and that, and that helped um i also um think that we were uh, that everybody that all the volunteers actively pursued the people as they walked by and just tried to engage them in conversation so uh, yes that's i think all those uh, attributed to our, our increase in membership. Yeah, um, Ellen, I just wanted to uh, reiterate what I think I told you by email anyway, is that, that you were a fantastic leader um, in, in co coordinating that membership effort. Um, you, you got yourself, um, uh, you scheduled a wonderful staff of volunteers who um, really were engaged. And the, the testament is the fact that uh, you beat our, our record for memberships. And it wasn't even an orchid show. It was just a sale. <laughs> so um, that, that credit goes to you for, uh, for your hard work and for your, for your um, you know, thinking through things so perfectly. Uh, so bravo. And we're all really grateful to you for that. Great job, <laughs> Ellen. Th thank you. I I I think it'll. It, um, if I if I have any talent or anything at this, you know, to to reach out to the people to have them become members, it will show when we get back after, like after we've been doing normal shows because. The year before, I think that when I broke a record, it was because. Uh, Rick was saying, well, you know, join and you'll, you'll be able to go to the newcomers tour. And this time we hadn't had anything. So I think people were, were anxious. And so it's kind of like, I want to see a normal year. <laughs> but I, we, I appreciate the good words. I, I thank you very much. We, we all would like to see a normal year, but um, <laughs> uh, none, none, nonetheless, it's, uh, you know, I, I wasn't actually aware that you broke our record um last at the last show as well so mm -hmm. you're just a you're just a record breaker you're a record smasher you know god Thanks. bless I, I i hope it continues i will work to make it i will work to to continue it okay well um just so you know you cannot resign. You have to continue this forever <laughs> in perpetuity. Okay, so I'm, I'm glad you understand that, and and I'm, I'm going to close the discussion now. So okay. well done, well done, Ellen. Brava. Okay, um, the scholarship fund. I was hoping Shelley would be, would uh, be here. Uh, Larry's already talked a bit about it, but Larry, do you want to give everyone the details of of sure. how much was raised for the scholarship? Um, so, uh, so at the sale, uh, we raised two thousand four hundred four dollars uh, and forty eight cents. There were a few odd coins in 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 the in the jar, um, and that included, which is a terrific number, uh, and that included a one thousand uh, dollar check um, that was given to us uh, by Hawaii Hybrids, uh, Jared and oh. Takasaki. Um, so, which was very generous. Um, so, uh, putting that together with uh, previous uh, scholarship uh, donations, which uh, we had gotten, um, the uh, uh, we ended up uh, this year so far. Uh, we've gotten donations of more than uh, six thousand three hundred dollars um, for uh, for scholarships, um, which is enough to fund two complete scholarships, right? Since, since we, uh, we pay uh, $3,000 a year for our scholarship students. Uh, so, so, so we are now in much better shape. We had been, uh, at the beginning of this year, our scholarship fund had gotten down to $3,000, which was enough to pay for one scholarship. Um, but, um, and, and, uh, and, and I've paid uh, half of that amount, as I was mentioning previously. Um, but uh, with the new money uh, coming in, uh, we now have uh, more than enough to fund two scholarships next year. That's fantastic. And I, I think we, um, you know, we need Shelley for this discussion, but 
I think we can maybe find other ways of advertising the fact that the scholarship is out there and getting the word out. And it, it seems like, well, um, one thing that, that Larry left out was that he and, and Rick Kelly each contributed a thousand dollars. Rick to, um, contributed 2000. <laughs> yeah. Rick, Rick did 2000, my goodness. Okay. So that's, that's part of the reason why uh, we're, we're flush with scholarship money. So a big round of applause for those two gentlemen um, for, for doing that. But it's, I think a priority of our society to, to do this. And it's, um, it, I, I, I think that we, we need to um, get the word out. I mean, we've got social media now. Uh, we should be able to find students um, that can use these funds. So um, I'm, I'm hoping that uh, for the next round that, uh, not that it wasn't, uh, not that this wasn't a fantastic recipient, but maybe it could be a little bit more competitive uh, uh, but if we if we raise people's awareness about the, this money being available, so anyway, um, enough said about that. Um, I I do want to talk a little bit about um, the fundraising. Hey, for, yes, sorry, go ahead. Sorry, Ellen. Dan, I didn't see you. Oh, no, that's okay. Ellen has her hand up. She does. How would mm -hmm. I know that? Okay, <laughs> Ellen. Oh, I see it. I see it. I see it. <laughs> Ellen, go ahead, please. Sorry. Uh, um, I just. Um... What, for awareness, do do we at the show do we make like um, is there anything that says scholarship at, at, normally at a show? Do we make mention of, of having a scholarship? Dana, you want to take that? Yes, we do. Um, oh, okay. We uh, we uh, the silent auction that we do for three days. Um, has signs all around, you know, that the proceeds from the from our silent auction go for uh, for this particular scholarship, and you know, and some of the signs that we had out there by the by the front there uh, for the sale are the some of the same ones that we use during the um, silent auction, and so people are very aware that everything that they that they bid on and 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 hopefully you know, win, you know, they're the winning bidder that all that money goes for this for scholarships. And uh, okay. so, okay, thank you. Hmm? Thank you. Yeah, I think I think we need to um, really um, do a little bit more in the way of really making, you know, I, I think maybe over the years, you know, we're just thinking that, oh, people know this. And, you know, and I, and I think we, we probably ought to get some new signage out that reminds people, you know, that, yes, this is, this is a fundraiser for our scholarship fund. Um, of course, you know, this was just a, this was just a really weird year, probably with lockdowns mm -hmm. at UH and, and all of that. Yep. But, but I, th I well, think that we can get the word out in other ways and should. Well, you know, last year with the pandemic and the shutdown and the quarantines and all that stuff. Shelly had more than 15 applications last year for whatever mm. reason, but this year she only got one. Yeah, so. it's very strange. Yeah. You okay, well, um, just, uh, you know, um, it's too bad Shelly uh, has a tough time making these meetings because um, I'd really love her input with the group on, on this stuff. So, but mm -hmm. it is what it is. Okay, um, I, I, I will, oh, go ahead, Matthias. Yeah, I wanted to remind you that, um, you know, I talked with you about the lady from the radio station, but I have contacted her and she was really thinking with the idea that they do something because of the policy. So you may want to still explore that she's back from vacation and call her and, you know, see if we can do something with the radio station or the Rio Orchid Society raising funds for it. Scholarship on the radio. I mean, this is a platform that reaches a lot of people. So this is this is Nikki from, yeah, yeah the one that you put me in touch with. Unfortunately, I kind of dropped the ball on that one. Um, she was she had mentioned she was going away on vacation um, uh, and wouldn't be back until after the the sale was over. So um, we didn't get a chance to do a promo with her, but. Um, 
but Rick Kelly arranged and, and Larry arranged for other radio and, and, and Carl arranged for other radio uh, announcements, which is, I think, part of the reason we had such a nice turnout. Um, but, but yeah, it's, it's also true that um, we can uh, we can announce the scholarship over the radio as well um, and maybe get a few other people when we're ready to to um, to start the next round. It's a great idea, Matthias. OK, um, I just wanted to talk a little bit about the um, about the effort to get uh, plants uh, from the judging community uh, that that uh, uh, created, as you know, we um, we need to pay a, a fairly significant sum to Glenn Barfield for the photography for our judging center, and um, I think the judges, in a in a way, are just a little embarrassed to uh, come to the society with their cup in their hand, you know, hoping for hoping for uh, some money from, from the society. And I know the society is perfectly happy to, to um, help the judging center with photography. Uh, but um, if we can set a precedent where we can be a little bit more self-sufficient, uh, which is I think what happened, um, <coughs> the, the judges, the judging community came through in a really big way uh, to, um, to uh, and, and had some really fantastic plants that uh, we almost completely sold out uh, of, of, of those plants. There were a few little leftovers, but it was uh, exciting. And uh, I think we made close to, Larry, you probably have the number, but it was oh, like $3,000 or very close to that. It was um, $2,800 and two cents. <laughs> and the, the, the reason for the absence is because for credit card uh, sales, um, we, we get at approximately 3% uh, uh, service charge from, uh, from Square uh, gotcha. for credit cards. But, but basically that the $2,800 is the um, uh, actual amount um, that, uh, that, that we received uh, cash check and credit cards uh, you know, into our bank account. Uh, and I have written a check for that amount and sent it to Glenn uh, for AOS judging. That's, that's great. I, I suspect we're still going to need um, some donation from the society as well, but how oh, wonderful that we could do this. And, and uh, Tom, um, so earlier this, uh, this year, I, this is actually after our last uh, board meeting, right, when you were talking about um, the, uh, the dire straits that the um, uh, that the judging center was in, as far as uh, paying for the uh, for photography, um, we so in in our budget last year we had budgeted one thousand five hundred dollars um, as a donation uh, to the AOS judging center, uh, and so I sent that amount, and so we have also uh, sent one thousand five hundred dollars this year. Uh, to the judging center from Hilo Orchid Society. Okay, so um, that should uh, keep us uh, keep us taking photos for quite a while. So uh, we're grateful for that. I assume um, that Glenn sent you the accounting that you were looking for, uh, or just just something to, uh, for your records about the donation. So that's that's really good. Yeah, he did. Okay, uh, great. Uh, so Glenn's been paid. Um, we already talked about memberships. Thank you again, Ellen. Um, Carl, I was wondering if you got any feedback from the stadium and if you were planning on having some kind of debriefing for key participants um, so that we can, you know, I, I've heard some comments from, from uh, some participants that that um, maybe, like for example, uh, the the evening hours were kind of a bust, but that otherwise the timing was really great. So just wondering what feedback you may have gotten. Okay, so um, overall the feedback was positive from just about from every sector um, in dealing with the county. Um, I guess. 
I was expecting some oversight during the event, like maybe get contacted or see someone overseeing our event, but I was not aware of anyone overseeing the event or made contact with me during the event, either from the county health department or civil defense. So I did talk to the, um, I guess, Dean at the, at the stadium, um, and he wanted to know how it went. He wanted to know numbers of people. He also wanted to know how long of a backup we had. Like, you know, they were limiting us to 100 people on the floor at any one time. And he was wondering how, how often we hit that maximum of 100. And I kind of shared with him that we really had a backup that first day on Friday for the first two and a half hours. And then after that, the numbers were manageable under 75 at any one time for the rest of the staff. So they were pretty happy about that. Um, otherwise, you know, Dean said they were happy that their the stadium was returned in excellent condition. Key Club did a good job cleaning it up. And, and I still have all the contact tracing information tickets in my possession. No one has reached out to check to see if I have them or, or what happened to it. But I do have them in my So um, we're coming into the second week since the event. Um, I'm, my plan was to keep it for two weeks. And then if I don't hear anything, then destroy it. So. So, Carl, to your obviously then to your knowledge, there's been no COVID cases reported from the event or, you know, any, well, any repercussions. Yeah, you know, I put my name as contact for the event approval for, um, you know, the COVID and no one has talking to me during the event or after the event at all from the, reached out to contact me about the event. So. Um, I guess in some ways, you know, no news is good news. Um, you know, I kind of would dread that if they contact me and say, hey, we need that contact tracing information, that wouldn't be a good call to get. But so far, what are we about almost two weeks in? Tomorrow will be two weeks and nothing has been crickets from their side. I guess so, no, I guess no news is good news in this case. Yeah. So um, it might be a good idea to hang on to the to that red box for a while though. I was going to say know. the same. Um, yeah. Maybe at least another week or two. Okay. So Yeah, it's kind of strange. Wouldn't have talked to me about it and and wanted to make any arrangements or anything about it. They just been totally silent on, on all of that, whether hmm. there was anybody monitoring the event or, or oversaw the event or any feedback. So um, I guess, you know, the, the, the public was very positive about the event. I didn't have any issues, you know, with people, you know, coming to the show, having any concerns. Most everybody was pretty happy to be there. Um, you know, the vendors, in general, they all did very well. So I, I didn't get any complaints that sales were, you know, um, I guess were concerned that, mm -hmm. but I mean, we got two vendors on the call today. Um, yes. That, that, that are more than welcome to chime in on, on their thoughts. Well, while we have you here, why, why don't you do that? Um, uh, why don't we start with Kevin? Do you want to tell us your, you know, how you felt about the event? Was it a success? Is there anything that you would change about it? So this is my first orchid sale with the public. Um, so I really didn't have any expectations uh, just to participate. And um, actually had a lot of fun talking to customers and hearing what they're looking for and what their interests were. So, but the two days that we did, uh, both days, we did similar 
similarly in terms of overall sales and uh, it definitely was worth what was worth our time so we would do it, wasn't it, a, do it again it wasn't a waste of time that's great it, it, it no it, it was it was fun actually and uh, so it was good to be out there great okay matthias you have anything you want to add i thought it was really good i mean um, number one all the customers were super nice so they were uh, you know not, not unruly or anything everybody was from racing with the mask and everything and so i thought it was really good and exceeded greatly my expectations i had a number in my head that i was hoping to reach and uh, i definitely exceeded that so i was super happy so just for future reference to both of you, uh, how did you feel about the hours? Did the hours work? Was it, was there anything that you would change? Hours worked for me. And uh, maybe uh, on Saturday, uh, I might have liked starting a little bit later uh, for the public. So it would give us a little bit more time to prepare, but uh, but that was very minor. Um, um, but the overall logistic wise, uh, being able to use the cards to unload and, and, and park near the entrance. I really liked the stadium uh, for this purpose. Uh, so I was very impressed with uh, everything, how, how well it was organized. And uh, so it was very well done. Uh, definitely thank Carl for, for thank his Carl for that. For that. Yes. He, he organized the whole thing. Right. It was painless, uh, just loading, un unloading, and uh, just getting the booth set up. Uh, it was just, it was very well organized, and, and I was very impressed. So was I. Mm -hmm. All right. Any other comments about, about, uh, the stadium oh. sale. Just a quick comment. Um, I subscribe for um, Akatsuka and they have made a video and um, emails talking about uh, how nice the sales went and mm -hmm. uh, that they had a very good turnaround for people um on these two days and they were extending sales online uh for mm. the ones who couldn't have made it so i think in terms of the orchid world our sales is a must so we should repeat it okay all right um <clears throat> So I guess I wanted to kind of wrap up, you know, this is Please. something new for us, different from the show. There's a lot of unknowns, but it turned out very positive. Um, you know, we're hoping to break even and maybe come out maybe a little bit ahead. And we exceeded that expectation. We had the benefit of getting the stadium for free this time around. Um, I don't also know if I could you. Yeah. And I don't know if I could guarantee that next time around. Um, I would try, but you know, I think this event probably cost us somewhere in the ballpark of a thousand dollars to put on. And the stadium, if we would have had to pay for it, would have been twenty six hundred. I mean, sixteen hundred. So, in the worst case scenario, if we had to pay for the stadium, it would be twenty six hundred dollars, which would still allow us to come out ahead um, if we have similar numbers should we decide to do this again um what i did learn from this is that you know if we have any limitation if we were to do a show and the county started talking about a limitation on people on the floor how many people we could have on the floor i don't see where we could manage that under a show situation I mean, even at 100, probably the majority of it will be used by vendors and people on the floor. Even at 200 people on the floor, I don't think we would have been able to manage that crowd and, and have people come into the show and be happy waiting. And so that's something to consider <laughs> that if we start talking about the show and the county starts talking about putting a limit on how many people on the floor, 
we have to really seriously look at that because as I think that will be something that will be difficult to overcome. Yeah. I guess so, the other thing is that uh, Carl, just so just to make sure I'm understanding. So you you're saying that it worked this time because we only had uh, ten booths, nine vendors, right? And 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 the HOS. Well, but you're you're saying that if it were a normal show, there would be far more booths and therefore far more vendors. I, that, but I think the larger is what I was kind of observing is in general the per the people that attended the sale was maybe about half an hour for the general person that came for the sale. On a show, I would expect that to probably double, like an hour with things going on that they would go in and then be there a while and not turn around and go out. And then well, well, looking at exhibits. Looking yeah, at exhibits takes time. Packing up outside, waiting for people at an hour at a time, trying to one person leave, another person goes in. So, so kind of more of that is what I was thinking. You know, both combination on number of vendors and people on the floor, and then how long people would would I would expect them to hang out at a show compared to a sale. So, okay. yeah, thanks kind of a combination of both those things and then there was some talk of hours I guess you know there could be we weren't quite sure and we set some hours and we did some adjustment kind of late and trying to fine-tune it but I think we could probably get away with maybe our earlier ending on a Friday and maybe give a little bit more time on a Saturday morning for vendors so so I think that's some kind of good feedback to get and I guess the next thing is knowing that this is a successful tool that we could use. Um, there are probably going to be some discussions, probably first quarter next year, as far as you know, would it be appropriate to do a sale, depending on the outlook or the possible outlook of a show later that year or something. Um, the nice part, from my point of view, from putting on the show to putting on a sale, I would guess that the sale was probably about. Uh, 20 percent maybe 25 percent to put on a sale compared to a show and 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 the money outlay is by far what maybe shoot the show is costing like maybe about thirty thousand to put on something like that where the sale was a thousand so that's a big difference there um so just some thoughts to kind of put in people's head, you know, when it comes around to next year, first part of next year, thinking about what should we do? Just some things to think about. Um, I, I ran into Norman Mizuno at the Maku'u Market and he extent, wanted to extend his thanks to the society and especially to you, Carl, for, for how smoothly everything went. Um, but one thing that he did say that I thought was, um, something also for us to consider, I don't know if it's right or wrong, was that he loved the fact that it was only two days. It wasn't, um, it wasn't, you know, like this four day thing of, you know, setting up exhibits and, and, uh, you know, it, the, the, it, it, it was for him um, so much easier than it's been in previous years. Uh, so, you know, maybe we need to think about um, what kind of events we want to do. You know, maybe we just want to have many exhibits. Uh, this is going to be kind of like a segue into, um, into this other uh, thing that you're talking about at the, uh, at the art center. Um, and and, and maybe, maybe we, instead of doing huge extravaganzas, maybe we can do something on a smaller scale that's that's also a uh, kind of a show, just not, not uh, so labor intensive and time consuming uh, to do and uh, have it all happen in the span of two days. So something to think about for the future. Cause I, I know for Norman, he was very grateful that it was so easy and I'm getting the same vibe from Kevin. Not sure, um, you know, Matthias, I know you love to do a big extravaganza but perhaps it's, uh, Perhaps we can do small extravaganzas in the future. 
So just my two cents. Well, none of us is getting any younger. <laughs> <laughs> There's that as well. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Well, Mat Matias is getting younger. He's got his uh, oh. teenage body back. He's yeah. on a diet. So what I want to say is like, you know, the, the Orchid Show, we kind of put this on the map. You know, I think we kind of have to continue that. We have the biggest show here in Hawaii, and a lot of people come for that. So if you just think we're going to scale this down and don't have that anymore, that would be a disappointment for a lot of people. So, but on the other hand, I think we may want to consider having the regular Orchid Show in the summer, and then do one or two sales a year like we have done a couple of weeks ago, and I think before we go into the next year, we may want to consider having another small sale right before Christmas, you know, first week of December, because a lot of people want orchids, you know, there's a lot of the snowbirds are in town, they want to buy orchids for their house, and of course people want orchids because they are inside the house before Christmas, they want to make it look nice, so that's actually something to consider. My yeah, um, that okay. makes a lot of sense, Matthias. Maybe you, maybe we need to think about doing something like this every six months or so. So um, that uh, our very next board meeting, that'll be one of the top things on our agenda is if we want to plan another for uh, a pre-Christmas thing. It, it's looking to me less and less likely that we're going to have a Christmas party. So this might be another nice thing to to um, give us something to do, like, because we're also have lead such boring lives. We, none of us have enough to do. Kidding. <laughs> okay. Um, let's see. Uh, so um, I, I was trying to deftly segue into um, this uh, initiative that Carl is talking about us doing many exhibits uh, at the, um, at the art center. Do you want to tell us more about that, Carl? Yeah. So on Tuesday this week, I got a kind of a call out of the blue and it's kind of a time sensitive opportunity. I got a call from Shelly Hanaoka with the state, Hawaii state who manages the Wailoa art center. And they are, have scheduled an art exhibit at the Wailoa Center and the theme is mosaic. And mm -hmm. the reason she reached out to me was that she appreciated the many orchid displays that we used to do in our orchid shows. And she thought that it would be a, a right fit to have <laughs> a part of the show or have us participate as part of the show with orchid mini displays. Um, the show is from September 3rd through the 24th. And what she has set aside for us, it, should we decide to participate, is she has set aside six pedestals, two by two foot square surface for us to use. So I did tell her that we were having a board meeting and that we were having a membership meeting on Saturday and the board meeting tonight. And I told her I would share it with the board and if appropriate, we will share it with the members and see what interest we have in members who would like to participate in that. Um, I guess, you know, we haven't had an orchid show now for two years. And for a lot of our members, that's an opportunity for kind of a creative outlet is to do a mini display. So this might be something of interest to a lot of our members. She also said that if any of our um, orchid nurseries want to do um, one of these displays, that they're welcome to also leave their business card there on display um, with their mini display. So um, I, I kind of told her that the big challenge for us is these are live plants and three weeks is kind of a uh, tough duration. 
so I was kind of toying with the idea of maybe we could do, you know, split some time, you know, maybe someone do a display for a week or something like that. And then someone else puts up another display and then follow it up with another instead of trying to maintain a display for three weeks. I mean, mm -hmm. it, it could be people could switch out orchid plants, you know, if they have the same orchid and stuff. But so I'm just throwing that out to the board uh, for consideration. It was nice of them to think of us as an orchid society and appreciate some of our um, creative designs that we've had in our shows. So it was kind of nice to have that invitation extended to us. So I'm going to leave it open from the board on what you guys think. Um, yeah, that's, um, I, I, I think it's a very interesting concept and idea. And um, I'd like to participate personally. I don't know if anyone else would. I, I, I get, you're, you're correct that an orchid display is not going to last three weeks. Um, but um, that doesn't mean that we can't, uh, you know, go in there every few days and take off uh, dead flowers and foliage and, and replenish uh, with something, with something new. So um, I'm, I'm game. Uh, I'll certainly announce it at our meeting on Saturday. Uh, I'll also mention it to the judges and, um, and maybe some other orchid vendors will want to do it. Now, it's not, obviously it's not going to be a money maker. It's going to be a, you know, a very nice community activity. And I think that we can't, really do too much of those kinds of things as long as it doesn't you know hurt anyone's business or whatever in any case i personally am willing uh, maybe do something jointly with uh, with a couple of you like maybe dana has got her hand up you always have something in bloom at your house so um, and go ahead dana oh i was just thinking you know this is not like at the, at the orchid show where we have to follow the rules of 16 inches by 16 inches. Um, if they're, and, and, and you said, you said the pedestals are like two feet by two feet. Um, yeah. This area. Right. Yeah. So, you know, I think we could probably take artistic license and make them as, as small or as large as we wanted to make them as long as they fit on the pedestal. <laughs> right. So, yeah. So and, I think it's a great idea. And given that it's, a, a, the theme is mosaic, you know, like you're saying, all the guidelines we have for a show, we have more flexibility, <laughs> like not flowers, using um, non-organic um, material and stuff like that. We have full flexibility to design yeah. something for for this display. Mm -hmm. Other than that, this is Sandra. Other than that, uh, I think uh, we should consider at least 50% of uh, um, this space we could offer to orchid vendors is promotional. I think it's a brilliant idea to put the cards there. I remember once uh, participating in something similar and um, Hausmanns gave me a bunch of those uh, cascading phalaenopsis. I didn't have a single person wouldn't stop and say, whoa, and I would give that card because uh, it's online. They can go order the same plants. You know, it's something fantastic. You don't need to uh, guess or you are seeing. I think the vendors uh, could take a good advantage on it. Yes, Alan. Uh, I think it's a, a good idea. Personally, I, we are an orchid society. Uh, society mean people. We have a lot of members. I think that, that it's good to reach out to every member, find out who wants to uh, participate in making a display. And then maybe we could schedule, you know, give, give uh, each person a week or whatever, you know, for, for, for their... their um, their display and um, you know I think everybody needs to have an equal opportunity to display 
their talent and making a, a mosaic or what they think of as a mosaic orchid dis display. Um, but I, I, I love the idea. I, I think it's, it's really nice. Okay, well, um, Carl, r tell us again how many pedestals are available? We have six. Six that are being made available to us. So yeah. we could conceivably have six different people or we could have six collaborations for displays. So let's definitely bring it up at the meeting and I'll also tell uh, the judges about it um, and whatever uh, commercial vendors um, might be interested in doing something that hopefully will be promotional for them. I see Matthias's hand. You know, I think this might be a little complicated. I don't want to be too negative with all this, but you know, the span of two weeks and that it is somewhere where we can have really control over who's going to the event, so to say, meaning people can touch the stuff and rip things off. You have to water it, you know, uh, even if yeah, we, someone needs to go every day, but it doesn't have to be every every I participant. I remember just the one week of the orchid show how much the plants were stressed out after that. So if you're looking at something three weeks, even if you change it, out, it's pretty much a death certain for all the plants. I mean, people are going to touch it because you know they want to see what it is. They don't even some don't even know what orchids are. They want to see if it's alive or not. Alive touching the stuff so i don't know this is a personally i know I what think you, i want to be you know putting my cells into plant i know what you mean uh cool. it, it is it is true but uh, you know on the other hand if we have some uh, you know i'm not sure what the other displays are going to be i'm assuming that that um you know if this is an this is an a, a place where they do art exhibits that people are going to be respectful about uh, handling and that there will probably be some rules. Maybe the area is, is somewhat roped off so that people can't take objects from within. But I, I think we need to have that information, uh, Carl, uh, if you want to follow up with them. And, what are you talking and... about? Where are you talking about? Well, hello, Lise. Good to see you. Where Wailoa. are you talking about? <laughs> the Wailoa Art, Art Center. Okay, Wailoa does not have anything blocked off. I've, I've had paintings in there, so I know. I went to their bonsai exhibit and they, they, they did have people that did the exhibit themselves nearby and wandering around, but you're, you're correct, Matthias, things could get damaged as long as, Somebody that's making the, the display goes into this, you know, knowing that. Mm -hmm. And and I think those, I'm speaking for myself, but also hopefully for some other Hilo people, those of us that live right here in town, you know, it'd be very easy for, for me to run down there with my spray bottle and just, you know, keep them alive and And me trim. too, I would, I, I yeah. would do that. Yeah, they do have little, um, what it is like uh, is it's a circular building and they have um, screens in between sections that they put paintings on and there are niches that they took, put paintings in. So I would assume you could put your stuff in a niche, you know, if that makes people feel better. So the, the bonsai exhibit had niches and it also had some just right out in the open this time. I, I, I didn't, don't remember seeing any screens there, but that, they probably had those for the, for the pictures to hang on. Yeah, it, they're just in between the, the different sections. So I don't know if they're permanent or not. I, I never looked that closely at them. Yeah, you know, if, if uh, we could actually have 18 different people do it if there's six displays and uh, they're there for a week at a time. So you could have up to 18 different displays. Well, um, I, I think Carl needs to get back to the, the um, event coordinator as to whether or not we'd like to participate. I would say, can we say tentatively yes, that 
people in our society yeah. um, would probably like to participate in this, but that we can't commit to a specific number of exhibits at this time. So um, what do you say uh, to that, Carl? Is that yeah, doable? I could definitely give her that we will participate. It's just a question of whether, you know, how many pedestals we could use. And we won't know that till we reach out to our membership and get that interest from our membership. Right. So is this an exhibit? Is that the idea? Mm -hmm. Many exhibits at, the, at that uh, venue. 12, uh, let's see, 24 by 24 inch pedestals. Yeah. It's a nice place. I mean, it's a nice area for an exhibit. It, it has, uh, you know, and it gets a fair amount of traffic, so. Yeah, no, it's a, it's a, it's a lovely venue, um, underutilized in my opinion. So it'd be great to participate in something there. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll definitely mention it at our meeting on Saturday, and I'll also mention it to the judges. We'll see if uh, any of them are interested. Uh, hard, to, hard to say what the interest will be, but just judging from our reaction here uh, and this very small board meeting, it seems like there's interest in doing it. And I think it would be good for the society to have something like that there. Hey, as somebody who's put paintings in there, I don't think it's underutilized at all. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, true. Okay. I, just, I, I haven't seen that many events advertised. I think you just have to know. Oh, about yeah, it. it's a new one every month. You just have to go and see. They... Yeah. And they used okay. to have it in the newspaper all the time, but they, the newspaper has stopped running that. Whole section. Yeah, because I, 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 I never really hear about it unless I know someone who's exhibiting something. It's the only way that I know that anything's happening there. So, all, all right. right. Well, um, adding that to the agenda and getting the discussion. Thanks. Okay. Um, it's all. It's almost ten after seven. I'm just going to mention a couple of things and then I'll let us adjourn. Um, so. Uh, just, just so you know, we're, we're uh, I'm, I'm still looking for ideas for, uh, for presentations at meetings. I'm, I'm going to do uh, a talk on my Africa trip from 2019 um, for this coming meeting. Uh, it's a, it's a, it's a good talk that people enjoy. A uh, lot of pretty pictures. So I hope you'll all come. Um, but, uh, but. The fact that I'm doing a talk means that we're kind of running out of uh, ideas. So I really do want you to put your thinking caps on. Um, perhaps it's time to do another culture session. Uh, I thought that was actually really, really successful. And maybe we can, uh, you know, in conjunction with that, we could do maybe another set of Jeopardy. Um, and, and, you know, it, it, that could be a really fun uh, meeting with those two things combined. So, um, in, in any case, that's that's my great hope. Uh, I also wanted to talk a little bit about the possibility of a holiday party or not. Um, I know that with the, the Delta variant uh, spiking here on the Big Island, that that um, uh, Dana and Amy and Ellen, I think, all expressed some concern about uh, whether or not uh, a Christmas party is going to make any sense. Yeah, uh, I see thumbs down uh, pretty much all the way around. No, so can we push that off a little? Because Delta is spiking now, but wouldn't we feel funny if it spikes now and by November it's way down? Well, at least I, uh, I, I agree, but the fact is that things need to be planned. Um, we can't just yeah. decide in November that, yes, that we're going to we, do a Christmas party. Could we ask, um, uh, what do you call it? Um, Nani yeah. Mao, Jeff at Nani Mao. Yeah, Nani, Nani Mao. Mao, if they would reserve us that weekend and we will confirm, say, in September. We can reach out to them, but um, 
I, I really kind of have my doubts uh, about that. What I will say, though, is that Nani Mao does want to work with us, and perhaps um, we can do a uh, the our Christmas sale there, and that <laughs> might be that might be something that they would be interested in, and could also uh, work out very very well. Um, we scoped it out, uh, the you know the whole place out, and um, it would be an attractive uh, uh, venue uh, with, with, you know, almost completely open air. So um, if, if we do reserve the place, say for a sale, it's conceivable that, um, that maybe we could do, uh, you know, if, if the spike is over by November, it's conceivable that we could do something there. So, um, I can approach him and see see what he says, but I I'll be honest. I, I kind of want to um, take a step back uh, from the Christmas party idea for a variety of reasons. Um, I'm I, these are personal reasons, uh, and and so I you know this isn't really the place to discuss it. But, um, but I, I would like to talk about it maybe uh, with Dana and Ellen and Amy at some point about that possibility. In the meantime, I will reach out to the, the guy that uh, is the manager of Nani Mao and, and see if, does, does everybody think that might be a good venue for an orchid sale? Yes. Uh, just a comment, um, this is Sandra. I know that uh, it seems a bad thing. Vaccine was my, my life, my past life as a scientist. There is a Lambda variant starting in South America. It looked like uh, the population there got uh, vaccinated with the Chinese version of the vaccine, which is protecting nothing uh, in that case, and that they are brewing a Lambda variant. We hope it doesn't get to here, but I, like everybody, I'm having my heart broken to see variants, variants, but the last um, disease I was working with, it had 33 variants and uh, unfortunately no vaccine was covering each other. And... Sorry? Did Hello? someone have a comment? So well, that's my two cents. Sandy, your, your point is well taken. Um, I, as much as I don't want to believe it, uh, I think that we're, we're in for more of this. And until, uh, as I said uh, earlier, until um, you know, people take some proactive steps to, to immun immunize themselves, we're going to be in this situation for a while. Um, and it seems like, you know, I, I know me personally, I'm, I'm wanting desperately to get out on the road again. It's kind of what my life is about. So I'm going to do that. Uh, and who knows, I may be the one bringing a variant from Peru here. Um, hopefully not, but Peru is one of the places I need to go this winter. So scary. You are scary vaccinated times. with a good vaccine, Tom. Uh I, I am. I am, but but you know, I could just as easily get a breakout infection as anyone else. So, sure. look, um, I uh, and unless anyone, you know, I, I I'm committed to keeping these meetings brief. Um, unless someone has something of great importance they'd like to bring up, um, I'll make one last call. Go ahead, Lise. I see your hand. Um, what time did you start? Because I thought we were starting at seven. No, it's uh, we started at six, and it said I that we had quite changed clearly. that to seven. We had changed it, but I wrote um, kind of extensively that we were going to go back to six because it was the dinner hour, and we also, even though it's the dinner hour, and and uh, the last meeting that we had on the lanai was at six. So mm -hmm. all this going back and forth with the timing is is confusing. So I apologize that you didn't get the message. Um, no, but, I, I yeah. didn't see it anywhere in your emails, so 
I assumed it was going to be seven. Somewhere Sorry, in the that. email, it actually said um, that it was at six. Um, yeah, and, and I even explained that I know it's the dinner hour, but that it was, you know, we, we need to get these. I that email because what I got from you didn't mention anything like that. So that's possible I didn't get it. It was in an earlier email that you may not have gotten, please. Yeah, I, I've, I have to, I have to confess, least that I've, I, I've got a bad habit of occasionally leaving off someone from <laughs> these emails. I can't, I'm, uh, you know, I'm sorry. I'm trying to be good, but um, I, I, I do. It does happen. So if you were left off and you didn't get that message, that's my fault, and it's on me. So um, I'll forgive just look me. at the recording. I mean, you've got the recording, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, Yes. Yeah, so, Lisa, as as before, I've made a recording, and uh, I'll I'll make it available to you. Okay. So, as you know, on the agenda, the last item on there is about the September 9th meeting, and there's a question of six or seven p.m. Uh, it, should, <laughs> it should be six to seven p.m. Oh, sorry about okay. that. It's six, four, <laughs> okay. I'm be making six an executive decision from six to seven p.m. I don't know okay. where that order came from. Okay. Um, All right, got it. You know how we were talking about the, the 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 virus and the variants, and I heard that the lambda variant is has landed in Florida. The which Not variant? surprising. Lambda. Uh, that's the, I guess that's the variant from Peru, correct? Oh, okay. Lambda is a, I don't a Greek know. like it Delta. It's a, they are using the Greek alphabet for classification of this virus. So, um, yeah. is the most um, recent one moving forward from Delta to Lambda? Right. So um, it's it's starting. Hopefully, we can quell it before. Uh, before it becomes the next big thing. All right, with, with that wonderful news, um, <laughs> do I have a motion to adjourn? Hi. Uh, we have a second. So good night, everyone. Thank you. I think we actually covered a lot of ground tonight and I really appreciate it. Take care. Thanks, Thanks Tom. Thanks, Tom. Thank Aloha. Aloha. Thank you for coming, Kevin. Thank you for inviting me. Good night. Aloha. Aloha.